so this is just a really quick tutorial on the new Google Sites. Um, and you can see I've already typed in a Google search for Google Sites, and I'm just going to go right to Google Sites, um, the opening page. And on this, you'll notice I've already logged in. I'm in um, the Chrome browser. And this is the typical sites that I've been using. Um, and I've made a lot of them, primarily for my classes that I teach. But um, they have a brand new sites tool out, which is great. Uh, something you definitely want to dive into using. Everything looks nicer. Everything's a little bit easier to use. I'm going to go ahead and click New Google Sites. And we can start by simply coming down and adding a new site. And we will politely call this one um, right up here. Name the site. This will be ARCHDU delete me after this tutorial. Page name, test page, oops. And I already have this set up. Um, again, I've got a header on the page and I can come in and say change image. And perhaps for this one, I want to either upload something new, which I can do by going to upload and place a new file here or simply set it to blank, which is what I often find myself doing. Uh, where's the blank one at? It's in here someplace. Sort by URL, URL albums. Oh, well, let's just leave it for now. Or header type, here we go. Title only, that's what I was looking for. Title only, just to keep it kind of nice and simple. So I have a few things on my page that I can do in a really simple way now. Um, first, I can start with the text box, and that's going to place my text box on my page. Again, everything is pretty much going to scroll vertically. That's what websites do. This isn't a typical layout program like InDesign or something like that. This is We're building web pages, and specifically web pages to work on a variety of formats, so things are going to scroll vertically. Um, until you get into more complicated website design. Um, so, uh, entering text, simple enough. I have a few text options um, that I can do if I want this to be a title or heading or subheading. As I begin to, to pull this together, those things are going to update. As I set a theme, um, that is going to change, and that's one of the things I did early on as I was building the website, or I have some options early on as I'm building the website to, to create a theme that's going to change my basic text and headings and subheadings styles. As long as I have normal text, I have my options of bold, italics, um, justification. Once I go to a heading, if you'll notice, those things are taken away um, because the subheading style is going to overwrite the styles of my normal text. If I want those options back, I can always come back, highlight this normal text, and then I have some basic options back, to get back again. I have a few more editing options in terms of generating code or strike throughs, or I can go back in and clear my formatting. In other words, it's going to take me back to default text at any point in time. Next, again, these things are stacking vertically. So the next thing I might look to do is add an image. And the most common thing that we're going to be doing is uploading original images that we're pulling off of our system. So I'm going to go ahead and use upload. So I'm going to upload from my computer. 214.17, crossroads, open, and then upload should take just a second to upload this. I have some new options in terms of sizing my image. So if you'll notice, this is not distorting the image, but it is cropping it as I drag these out. So I want to look at spinning that across. And then let's go ahead and pull that down. So I can do those things very, very quickly now that, that didn't exist in the previous version of Google Sites. Really, really nice feature. Also. If I do multiple images at a time, let's go back to images, select files, let's add in 
two images somewhat compatible in size and say upload, it's going to go ahead and stack those or should stack them side by side simply by moving them around like that, which is another really, really nice feature in terms of beginning to lay these things out that I can just sort of drag them from location to location and get multiple images working in these sort of vertical stacks which is a really, really nice feature. Again, something that didn't exist in the previous version. So my other options um, that I can quickly do, one more thing that we'll typically get into doing would be um, adding in a YouTube video. So to do that, just go to my YouTube channel. Let's pull that up really quickly. Not that. Take me one second while I log into my YouTube channel and pull up my video list so we can actually embed something in my channel. Swing that across. So let's just go ahead and embed artificial light rendering. You I'm going to pause this right away. So what it's looking for is this link, this URL. So I'm just going to right click, copy, minimize, paste that in. Enter. Oh, okay. There's one more step there. Pressing enter. Sorry. Might need to go back and edit out that sort of dramatic pause there. And then then hit select. I, I suppose that what's happening here is I could have typed in Revit artificial light rendering and I would have had multiple options. Instead, I copied and pasted the URL in and did a search for that. Pulled up the same thing. I'm going to hit select. And that's going to place the video into my browser. Again, I can quickly resize that. To show up however I need it to on the web page. The last couple of things to show are going to be going to pages. If I want to insert or build a new page, um, right now if I add a new page it's going to go underneath the home. So I might want to call this videos and say done and that's going to immediately take me to a new page and that is going to be underneath the home page. So now you can notice I have home and videos. Um, underneath videos, if I add something new, we'll call this images. Done. I now have three M three pages, so they're going to stack up right here. When I go back to my home page, one more quick thing to show that I meant to, to go over on the stacking system. I can rearrange my stack at any time by grabbing this handle and moving them up and down. And then I mentioned themes earlier as well. I can go to my themes tab at any point in time and change my basic style, leveraging these things right here, uh, these, these different options. Font styles, classic and heavy. Basically, again, what I'm going to say in terms of building your first couple of websites, the goal is pretty much to always keep it simple. Keep it very, very simple. I'm looking for data. I'm looking for exactly what your project is trying to show and convey much more so than I'm looking for something flashy. And I mean that in a very literal kind of way. So keep things simple. Keep things clean. Keep things legible. As you progress on with this, you can certainly add in more things, especially you want to take note of being able to add in and embed Google Documents into this. Your last step of doing this is to go ahead and hit the Publish button. And it's going to say Set a Location. Um, and I can choose to make my site searchable or not. So this is going to be DU Test Delete. Publish. 
So that website is now live and I can come here and I can say view publish site. And I have that now live that everybody can see. From the live page, if I again, if I'm logged in to my Google account, I can come directly to edit this page and that will go right back to my editing system. Okay, just be aware, I actually have this open twice, so I have two edits that might be overriding each other. So that's basically it. Uh, you know, building these web pages, super simple to do, easier than using Word to start laying things out. And this also begins to store things in the cloud for you. So uh, I'm not going to say it makes them, puts things in a situation where you can't lose them. You can certainly lose files at any given point, but it gives you a really solid backup and a great mode to share your work and to collaborate. And obviously in Arc 225, this is something that we're going to be using extensively on every project that you're doing.